Okay, I'm going to teach you how to find the coordinates of the centroid of a triangle if you know the coordinates of the vertices. Uh, please notice this only works for centroid, not orthocenter or circumcenter or incenter. So, okay, well, the key is you need to know the coordinates of the vertices in the first place. So, looking at this uh, triangle XYZ, I see right here the coordinates of point X are 0, 3. The coordinates of point Z are 0, 0. And the coordinates of Y are negative 6, 0. So this formula up here at the top is um, here to, re to suggest to you that if I want to find the coordinates of the centroid, um, all I have to do is find the average of the x's, and that's going to be the x-coordinate of my centroid. And then I will find the average of the y's, and that will be the y-coordinate of my centroid. So look, um, my x values. Let's do the x values in green. Okay? x value, x value, x value. All right, those are all my x values that I just circled in green. So if I want to find the um, x coordinate of my centroid, I will find the average of those x values. So I'm going to do 0 plus 0 plus negative uh, 6. Mess that up a little bit. Okay, 0 plus 0 plus negative 6 divided by 3. Okay, that's how you take the average of three things. You add them up and divide by three. Okay, and uh, so that's going to give me, well, zero plus zero is uh, nothing. And then, so I just got negative six. Negative six divided by three is negative two. So negative two is the x-coordinate of my centroid. Um, then, let me switch to blue. Now let's do the y values. So I've got a y value here, a y value here, and a y value here. So again, I will just find the average of the y's, and that should give me the y value of my centroid. So x, y, z. So I'm going to do 3 uh, plus 0 plus 0. Okay, so this is me finding the average of these three y values. Add them up, divide by three. That's how you find the average. Well, zero plus zero is nothing, so that really just goes away. So that's going to leave me with three over three, which is one. Okay, so there it is, ladies and gentlemen. These should be the coordinates of my centroid, negative two comma one. So according to that, the centroid should be right here at negative 2, comma 1. Okay, so look, we are done. Okay, that's what we were asked to do. This is the centroid. But let's make the connection with um, the way we learned to find the centroid before. Remember, the centroid is the intersection of what segments? Medians. Hoping you were saying medians or thinking medians just then. So look, my children. Um, let's talk medians. Remember, a median goes from a vertex to the midpoint of a side. So looking at this side, um, this would be a midpoint right here. Looking at this side, this would be a midpoint right here. Now this one is a little tougher. Would this be a midpoint? I've got that, I've got that, okay, this is probably pretty close to the midpoint right here, pretty close, not exact, but pretty close. So those are my three midpoints. So if I draw my segments that go from a vertex to a midpoint, okay, one of them is going to be right here, okay, one of them is going to be right here. Okay, and one of them is going to be right here. Okay, vertex 
to a midpoint. Okay, so as you can see, um, by doing this according to the way we learned it, according to the definition, looking for the intersection of these medians, we can see that um, they do in fact intersect at the point negative 2 comma 1, just as we predicted with this new method. Okay, so it, so it makes sense. Um, all of these problems are pretty much the same, so I'm just going to do like one more of them. I feel like I should do one that has fractions in it. Does this one have fractions? No. Okay, I'm going to do two more. I'm going to do problem number two, and then I'm going to skip to one that has fractions in it. Um, okay, so let's look at this one, problem number two, just to make sure you have it down. So, first, ordered pairs, people. Okay. D, E, F. So, point D here is, uh, what? Negative 5, comma, 0. Negative 5, comma, 0. Point E is the point 0, comma, 6. And the point F is 2, comma, 0. Okay, those are the, are the coordinates. So let's do the average of the x's and the average of the y's. So once again, here are my x's. Negative 5, 0, and 2 are my x's. So I'm going to do negative 5 plus 0 plus 2 divided by 3. Okay. Um, negative 5 plus 2, um, negative five, I guess I'll just show my work here. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. So that's negative 3 over 3. So that's going to be negative 1. So that's the x value of my centroid. Um, now let me switch colors. Now I'll do the y values. So the y values are 0, 6, and 0. Okay, so 0 plus 6, let me move over a bit, uh, 0 plus 6 plus 0 divided by 3, taking the average of the y's. Well, that's just going to be 6 over 3, so that's just going to be 2. Okay, so there it is. These are the coordinates of my centroid. Notice it matches with what um, the answer key said in the first place. But one more time, let's see how this matches with what we would have thought. Negative 1, 2 um, is right here. So they're saying that that's the centroid. All right, let's get some medians going. Um, medians, okay, so this is 5. So I need to go like 2 and a half. No. It's seven, so I need to go three and a half. Okay, so this this would be a midpoint right here. All right, these midpoints are a little hard to see. This would be a midpoint right here. Okay, what do I have going on here? Okay, I don't know. The midpoint is like somewhere in this area. Okay, so one more time. So if I do um, vertex to a median, okay, vertex to a midpoint, okay, another median, and vertex to another midpoint. So again, uh, they, they do meet at negative 1, comma 2. So we can trust that this system is working out correctly. All right, so these problems are all the same. The answer key has already been posted, so you don't really need the video just to see these answers. But there's the answer number three and four using the same method. I just want to do one with fractions in it just to make it clear what's happening. So I'm going to do number five and, and, uh, and then stop. That'll be the end of my little video here. Um, so this will be the last one. So... RST. So point R here is 0, 0. And then point S 
up here. I don't know why I'm putting these dots here. Okay, point S is negative 1, 4. And point T is 6, 0. So let's just do the same thing one more time. So the average of the x's. So the x's are 0, negative 1, and 6. So when I go to do that, that's going to be 0 plus negative 1 plus 6, all divided by 3. OK, so that's going to give me negative 1 plus 6, that's 5. So that's going to give me 5 over 3 for that part. Okay, now let's switch to blue for the y value. So I've got 0 and 4 and 0. So that's 0 plus 4 plus 0 divided by 3. Well, that's just the zeros go away, so that's just going to be 4 over 3. Please do not make decimals. Just leave the fractions as fractions. So um, 5 over 3 and 4 over 3. Notice how that matches what the answer key said. So that is what we're looking for. Okay, because we're not estimating. So there's no way you could come up with these fractions this exactly if we were just drawing lines and seeing where they would meet. Um, you would be guessing at the decimal. So this is more precise. Um, so that's why I want to make sure that you know it aside, so you can see how to get exact answers. Of course, if I wanted to see where to plot these points, I could turn these into decimals. You know, 5 over 3, 4 over 3. Okay, 5 over 3. Okay, there's the fraction. I could hit this button right here, forcing the decimal. So basically 1.7 is the decimal approximation here okay so this is about um, 1.7 comma and then 4 over 3 4 over 3 okay force the decimal is 1.3 so it's approximately 1.7 comma 1.3 so if I did want to graph this point and see where it is, it would be like closer to 2. So, you know, 1.7 would be about like that. 1.3 would be a little bit lower than half. So somewhere around in this area right here, we'd be expecting to find um, the centroid, about 1.7 over and then 1.3 up. Okay, um, that should give you the idea of how to do it. So you should be able to do the rest of the problems using those examples. Please make sure you show your work the way I am. Do not, if you just copy down answers, you will not get credit.